Welcome to one of the videos looking at financial economics. And in this session, we're going to work through a couple of examples of the relationship between the price of a bond and the yield on a government bond. This is a really key part of financial economics and is likely to be tested, uh, for example, on the new multiple choice papers for A-level. OK, so here's the relationship between market interest rates and bond prices. The key point initially is that a bond is a fixed interest security. What that means is that when the government issues a bond, typically sold to the financial markets by the country's central bank, the bond itself pays a fixed annual amount of interest. And this is known as the coupon on the bond. Now, this coupon can be paid in any currency. It could be a, could be a dollar, it could be a pound, it could be a euro, for example. That coupon is fixed but the yield on the bond will vary. The best way to think about the yield on a government bond is to regard it effectively as the interest rate on the bond. Here's the key point. The yield on a fixed interest bond will vary inversely with the market price of the bond. The yield on a fixed interest bond will vary inversely with the market price of the bond. In other words, when bond prices are going up, the yield will fall. When bond prices are on the way down, the yield will increase. OK, so let's work through a numerical example. Consider a 10-year bond issued in 2016. So the bond has a nominal face value of £5,000 at issue and pays a fixed coupon, fixed interest, of £200. So the yield is calculated by the formula. The yield equals the interest on the bond divided by the market price of the bond times by 100. In other words, if the bond is trading at £5,000. The yield is the interest, the coupon 200, divided by 5,000, multiplied by 100%, that gives a yield of 4%, 4%. Now let's think about what happens when life changes. Again, let's take a, a 10 year bond with a £5,000 initial value, £200 interest, the yield is 4%. Every year, whoever's holding the bond is going to get £200 in interest and that represents for them a 4% yield if the bond has a face value of £5,000. If, for example, the yield was £500, then the yield will be 10%. Now, consider what happens when the market price of the bond goes up, perhaps as very strong overseas investor demand for a particular new issue of a government bond. So the market price of the bond is going to increase. Let's assume it goes up from £5,000 to £5,500. The bond is now trading at a price 10% above the issue price. But although the price of the bond has changed, the interest, or as we say before, the coupon, that doesn't change. That stays fixed at £200. So therefore the yield is the interest, £200, but now we have to divide by 5500 the new price. And that gives a yield of 3.64%. Can you see what's happened here? The market price of the bond has gone up, causing the yield on the bond to fall. A rise in market price causes an inverse relationship to the yield on a fixed interest bond. Now we can play out an example of where the market price of the bond goes down. For example, speculative selling. And if bonds in the bond market, people are typically selling the bond, bond prices will go down and that causes bond yields to go up because of the inverse relationship. So uh, let's work through our example here. Go back to the initial example. The bond was £5,000, paying £200 in yield, in interest. Now consider what happens if there's a speculative selling. Maybe there's a risk of a, maybe a partial default by the government. Speculators are getting nervous, they start selling bonds. 
As a result, the market price of the bond drops to 4,300. Interest, of course, stays the same. The coupon is still 200 pounds. So now to calculate the yield, the yield is 200 pounds divided by 4,300, multiplied by 100%, gives a yield of 4.65%. A fall in the market price of the bond causes an increase in the yield, confirming the inverse relationship. When the bond price falls, the yield on the bond goes up. Just put this in some, uh, to some sort of context. Here's a chart from the summer of 2016 showing the yields on 10-year government debt, 10-year government bonds across a range of countries. For many countries, in fact, the yield is actually very low, less than 1%. In some cases, it's negative. The effective yield on the bond is, is minus. Compare, for example, that with Greece, where the Greek government who wants to borrow money has to issue 10-year debt and pay nearly 8% yield per year to, uh, to get the money uh, from investors. So big spreads in yields across countries, in part because of factors such as deflation in Japan and the risk of bond default in the crisis hit country of Greece. Well, I hope you found that numerical example and explanation helpful in explaining a relationship between bond prices and bond yields.